Hello students, in our previous module, we had discussed about representing different type of motion using graph. Today in this module, we will discuss about how to find out equations for those motions using graphical method. When an object moves along a straight line with uniform acceleration, it is possible to relate its velocity, acceleration during the motion and the distance covered by it in a certain time interval by a set of equations known as the equations of motion. So, today we will be calculating those equations of motion by graphical method and those three equations are your v is equal to u plus a t, s is equal to u t plus half a t square and 2 a s is equal to v square minus u square, where u is equal to the initial velocity of the object, a the uniform acceleration, t is equal to the time interval, v is the final velocity and the s distance travelled by the object in a time t. So, dear students, let us first consider a relationship between the velocity and time and we will find out the equation for the velocity time relation. For that, let us consider this particular graph. So, in this velocity time graph of an object that moves under uniform acceleration as shown in the graph where the velocity starts with an initial velocity of u. Let us not consider u is equal to 0, but with certain value that is why the object starts from a velocity u and it undergoes uniform acceleration a and attains a velocity of v after a time interval of t. So, here we will try to represent this equation of time and velocity. So, for that let us draw a parallel a d to o c. O c is our time axis. So, we will draw a parallel a d to the time axis. Now, from the graph you can observe that b c represents the final velocity whereas, o a represents the initial velocity and o c and a d represents the time interval. Now, if you want to write that b c is equal to b d plus d c or we can write as o a d c is a rectangle o a will be parallel to d c and o a is equal to d c. So, in plus of d c we can write o a. So, let us see how we can find out the equation for the velocity time relation. So, have a look. So, here we will represent b c is equal to b d plus d c which is nothing but is equal to b d plus o a. So, here b c is nothing but from the graph you have seen b c is, is equal to the final velocity v, o a is equal to the initial velocity u. So, we can write by substituting these values v is equal to b d plus u or we can write b d is equal to v minus u. Now, from the velocity time graph, the acceleration of the object is given by change in the velocity divided by the time. So, here the change of velocity is nothing but b d because the final velocity is v u and the initial velocity is u. So, v minus u is the change in the velocity. So, how can we write the acceleration? So, acceleration will be is equal to b d divided by time t. So, we can write b d is equal to a t from the above equation we can write b d is equal to a t. 
now substituting the value of bd in this particular equation v is equal to bd plus u then we will get v is equal to at plus u or if i rearrange it we'll get v is equal to u plus at so this is the first equation for the motion that is the final velocity will be is equal to initial velocity plus the product of acceleration and time i hope you understood this now dear students we will go for another equation that is the equation for position time relation for the position time relation again we will consider the same graph right so here what we will consider that the object has a traveled a distance s in a time t under a uniform acceleration a so in order to find out the distance traveled by the object we can use that area enclosed within o a b c under the velocity time graph o a b c is nothing but a trapezium so in order to find out the distance traveled by the object when it has accelerated from an initial velocity of u to a final velocity of v in a time duration of t so let's derive that equation of graph so have a look how we can derive it so here what we will consider as i said the distance traveled by that object will be s which is nothing but is equal to the area of the trapezium that is o a b c that means again the area o a b c can be divided if you look at the graph the area o a b c can be divided into two part one is the area of the rectangle o a d c and the area of the triangle a d b so we will take the sum of these two areas then we will find out the distance traveled by the object so first we will find out the area of o a d c for that if you see if you divide it we will write it as area of your o a d c which is the rectangle and the area of triangle a r i am writing area of triangle a b d so first we will find out the area of o a d c then we will go for area of a b d so let us represent it as s1 and this one as s2 so for s1 if you go area of the rectangle o a d c in that case will be o a into o c from the graph it is clear you can see the graph once again the area of the rectangle will be o a into o c o a is nothing but the initial velocity o c is nothing but the time that is the time interval so here in place of o a we will replace it as u and o c will represent it by t so that means we get s1 as u t now let's go for the s2 that is the area of the triangle a b d so area of the triangle a b d will be is equal to half into a d into b d now substituting the value what is a d here a d is nothing but your time let's have a look again at the graph as o c is equal to a d the between o c is t that means a d will be also t that's why i have substituted the value of a d as t and what will be the value b d if you remember from the first equation when we are deriving the first equation b d is nothing but the acceleration so in place of b d i will place a t so that will give me half into a t square that means if i sum it up 
द डिस्टेंस ट्रेवल्ड एस विल बी इज इक्वल टू यू टी प्लस दिस इक्वेशन दैट इज द पार्ट हाफ ए टी स्क्वेर सो वील समराइज इट एज यू टी प्लस हाफ ए टी स्क्वेर सो दिस इज द रिलेशन बिटवीन पोजिशन एंड टाइम सो इफ यू आर प्रोवाइडेड विद द टाइम यू नो द एक्सीलरेशन एंड यू नो द इनिशियल वेलोसिटी यू कैन फाइंड आउट द डिस्टेंस ट्रेवल्ड बाई दैट ऑब्जेक्ट सो हियर द मोशन इज अलॉन्ग द स्ट्रेट लाइन एंड द ऑब्जेक्ट इज अंडर गोइंग यूनिफॉर्म एक्सीलरेशन सो दिस विल बी द सेकेंड इक्वेशन फॉर द मोशन now we will go for the third equation and what is that equation that is the position and velocity the relation between position and velocity so to find out the relation between position and velocity we will use the same graph that we have considered for the first two equation that is the velocity time graph so here in that velocity time graph what we can see the distance traveled by the object is s in a time of t and under a uniform acceleration of a that was given by the area of the trapezium o a b c so if you find out the area of the trapezium we can find out the distance traveled by the object so let's see how will you find out that area of the trapezium so you know the formula for the area of trapezium is is equal to oa plus bc multiplied by oc and that's divided by 2 so what is oa plus bc in mathematics also you have studied how to find out the area of the trapezium so oa plus bc is nothing but the parallel side the sum of the parallel side multiplied by the base that is your oc and divided by 2 now for that if we substitute the values for oa for bc and oc what we will get oa is nothing but your initial velocity u bc is nothing but the final velocity v and oc is nothing but your time t divided by 2 now from the velocity time relation that is v is equal to u plus at i can find out an equation or derived equation for time that will be v minus u divided by a is equal to t so i will substitute this particular value of t in this equation so what i'll get here u plus v multiplied by v minus u divided by 2a which is is nothing is equal to your s so if i rearrange this u plus v as v plus u then multiplied by v minus u divided by 2a you know that v plus u that is and v minus u is nothing but v square minus u square divided by 2a now if i rearrange this i will get s is equal to v square minus u square by 2a which is nothing but 2a s is equal to v square minus u square so here you see the third equation of motion that is 2as is equal to v square minus u square so dear students you saw how we can derive the equation of motion by graphical method so the three equations are called as equations of motion now to see the application of it we will solve some numericals related to it so let's have a look at some of the questions related to this equations of motion so the first question in front of you a train starting from rest attains a velocity of 72 km per hour in 5 minutes assuming that the acceleration is uniform 
find the acceleration and the distance travelled by the train for attaining this velocity. So, what are the things given to us? We are given a velocity of 72 km per hour, time duration is given to us is your 5 minute. So, what we need to find out is the acceleration. So, for finding out the acceleration, what is the equation that we will use? We will use the equation v is equal to u plus a t because the initial velocity is definitely 0, final velocity is given to us, the time duration is also given to us, we need to find out the acceleration. So, let us see how we can solve it, you can also give a try. So, here is the solution for it. So, we will consider that initial velocity is equal to 0, final velocity is given as v is equal to 72 kilometer per hour which is nothing but equal to 20 meter per second time given to us is equal to 5 minute which is nothing but is equal to 300 second and as i said we'll use the equation a is equal to v minus u divided by t now if you substitute these values in place of v, u and t, what you will get? You will get a value of 20 meter per second, in place of u will have 0 divided by the time 300 second. So, if you solve it, you will get the value as 1 by 15 meter per second square. So, this is our acceleration. Now, the second part was to find out the distance travelled by it. So, for that we will use the third equation of motion that is 2 a s is equal to v square minus u square. So, let us substitute the values and solve this second part of the numerical. Have a look. So, the formula that we will use is 2 a s is equal to v square minus u square. So, if you substitute the values 2 into a, a is nothing but your 1 by 15 meter per second square, s we will find out, v square is in terms of your meter per second that is 20 meter per second that is whole square and minus 0 square. Now, if you solve it, the value that you are going to get is nothing but 3000 meter which is nothing but 3 kilometer. So, the distance travelled by that object in that 5 minutes of time or 300 second is nothing but 3000 meter or 3 kilometer. So, this is how we can apply the equation of motion here and solve this numerical. So, dear students, now it is time to take another numerical and to apply the equation of motion so that we can understand how we are applying different equation of motion to different numericals or to solve day to day life problem also. So, here is the question, the second question in front of you. The brakes applied to a car produce an acceleration of 6 meter per second square in the opposite direction to the motion. If the car takes 2 second to stop after the application of the brake, calculate the distance it travels during this time. So, here what we see? We see a negative acceleration because the car is coming to a rest. So, to solve this, what we will do here? We have to take the acceleration magnitude as minus 6 meter per second square and the equation of motion that we will use here is the first equation that is v is equal to u plus a t and also we will use the second equation that is s is equal to u t plus half a t square. So, just have a look how we solve it. So, dear students, we need to substitute the values and we need to use those two equation in order to solve this numerical. So, have a look at the solution. 
So here what is given to us? First thing is a is equal to minus 6 meter per second square. Time given to us is equal to 2 second. Final velocity as the car is coming to rest, the final velocity is equal to 0 meter per second. So from the equation v is equal to u plus a t, we can find out the initial velocity. So v will substitute as 0, u will find out a is minus 6 meter per second square multiplied by the time value as 2 second and after solving the equation we will find u is equal to 12 meter per second and this value of initial velocity we will substitute in another equation which is your s is equal to u t plus half a t square. So, if you substitute these values, we got the initial velocity, we have the time, we have the acceleration. So, easily we can find out the distance travelled by the car. So, let us solve it by substituting the values. The formula is s is equal to u t plus half a t square. Let us substitute the values. u is equal to 12 meter per second, time is 2 second plus half into the acceleration that was given to us was minus 6 meter per second square and the t square value is 2 into 2 that will give us 4 second square. Now, if you solve this entire equation, you will get the value as 12 meter. So, we can say that the car has traveled a distance of 12 meter before it comes into rest. So, using the two equation of motion, we could solve this numerical. Now, dear students, we solve the problems related to motion along a straight path. There is another type of motion also and that type of motion is in a circular motion. So, we will see how an object travels uniformly in a circular path. Dear students, we have observed that when the velocity changes, we say that object is undergoing acceleration. Now, the acceleration can be achieved by two ways, by changing the magnitude of the velocity or by changing the direction of the object. So, as we say, when the magnitude changes, we say the velocity has changed and when the direction of the object has also changed, at that time also we say that velocity has changed. Now, can you think of any situation in which the magnitude do not change, but the velocity changes and we say that the object is undergoing acceleration. So, definitely you must have come across this kind of motion in your day to day life. You all are young, you must be playing a lot of games, you must be taking participate in athletic. So, if you know when a runner is running in a circular field with a uniform speed, where the magnitude of the velocity does not change, but as the runner is covering a circular path, each point in the circle gives a different direction. That means, although the magnitude has not changed, but the velocity keeps on changing due to change in the direction. So, in order to understand this circular motion, that is uniform circular motion, let us have a look at a video. Uniform circular motion Uniform circular motion is the motion of an object traveling in a circular path at a constant speed. The distance of the object from the axis of rotation remains constant at all times. To illustrate a uniform circular motion, tie a string to a ball and rotate it in circles. The string transmits the centripetal force 
which pulls the ball into a circular path. The ball travels at a uniform speed as it moves around in a circle. An object moving in a circle constantly changes its direction. Since the object is changing its direction continually, it will not travel at a uniform velocity. Velocity is a vector that has both magnitude and direction. A change in either the magnitude or the direction results in a change in the velocity. Therefore, an object moving in a circle at a constant speed shows acceleration because the direction of the velocity vector is changing. In all instances, the object is moving tangentially to the circle. To illustrate this concept, think back to the whirling ball. If the string is relinquished while whirling, the ball travels in a tangent, straight line path. This type of pathway occurs because there is no centripetal force holding the ball in a circular motion. A merry-go-round or orbiting electrons in atoms are examples of uniform circular motion. So, dear students, as you saw in the video, that motion of electron around the nucleus is in nothing but your uniform circular motion. There are plenty of examples of such type of motion. For example, a cyclist going in a uniform circular motion in a field. Our earth revolving around the sun is also an example of uniform circular motion. Or the satellite that are revolving around our earth is also an example of uniform circular motion. So, we say when an object is in a circular path, the velocity, magnitude of the velocity remains constant, but as the direction changes, we can say the velocity changes and we can say it is accelerating. So, in our sports meet also, you must have observed, if you have ever participated in the discus throw or you must have observed someone throwing a discus, before throwing the disc the participant rotates his body in a circular motion and then he throws that disc and the moment he throws that disc, the disc travels in a straight path from the point of release. This indicates that at every point in the circle, the direction keeps on changing. So, dear students, we will conclude today's lesson with a simple question. That question is, state the situation where an object with a constant acceleration but with zero velocity. That means, we will have a velocity zero but the acceleration will be a constant. So, can you think of any situation like that? So, to help you with that, Think of a situation when you throw a ball vertically upward. When the ball reaches the maximum height, at the maximum height, the velocity becomes zero. But that acceleration is still acting upon it. What is that acceleration? That acceleration is acceleration due to gravity. Although the velocity has come to zero, at the maximum height, but it is acted upon the acceleration due to gravity. So, this is the situation where we can say velocity is 0, but acceleration is constant. So, dear students, please go through your NCT textbook, solve all the numericals. That will help you to understand this lesson with a better clarity. Thank you.